Praise you, Almighty God. Here we are, another beautiful fall day, November 13th, well, you know, 2022. 13th, right? Yeah. Just making sure. Because, you know, us men, we're known to be wrong at some times. But, no, no laughing, but that's good. Anyways, I make the odd joke sometimes, but, you know, I think God, God's got God's got a sense of humor. Yeah. You take a look at the duckbill platypus. Remember, I told you the story before. And that's one ugly creature. Duckbill beaver, as far as I'm concerned, and it lays eggs. It doesn't uh, naturally uh, like, more, like like most normal mammals. They they lie birth or come up with eggs, right? But when you take a good look at that thing, he's so ugly. He's cute. You ever meet some, actually I shouldn't say some people's kids, but it's, it's ugly, but it's beautiful in the same time. Like the, everything that God creates is perfect. Some people will look at a baby when they're born and they'll go, ooh, ugly. But you know what? In God's eyes, it's absolutely perfect. It can have deformities. It can be missing this or missing that. That means nothing to God. You know what's important about that baby's life? His soul. His salvation. Because God made him perfect. Well, if he's perfect, then why has he got so many problems? Why don't you ask God that when you get there? We don't have the answers. As much as we all like to have all the answers, we don't have all the answers. Did you know that? Who has all the answers? He does. You can ask him when you get there. Because you're going to meet God face to face. Oh, not me. I don't believe in God. Well, let me tell you. I got news for you, Jack. You're going to meet God face to face. Do you like it or not? It's the Bible says every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess. That Jesus is Lord in front of Almighty God. Oh, Jesus and God are the same person. No, they're not. How many times am I going to tell you this? Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, all three in one. Three separate individuals. Oh, no, it's not my Bible says, oh, really? Let me lay an example out to you for those people who are ignorant. When Jesus was being baptized by John the Baptist, he came up out of that water, and who spoke from heaven? Was Jesus a ventriloquist? Who was it? This is my beloved son, who I'm well pleased. Hear him. Jesus never spoke about himself. He spoke about who? Almighty God. That kind of throws out your Jesus only kind of thing, doesn't it? He's better than Jeff Dunham, I can tell you that much if he's a ventriloquist. When Jesus was about 12 years old, he went into the temple and he was teaching the political people at that time. Oh, Sadducees. Because they're sad, you see. No? You didn't get that one? Some people, you know, they're sad, you see. <laughs> so he was teaching the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He was teaching the, the, the people who were in charge, you know, political people. And Jesus was there teaching them in the temple. And his mom and dad, I don't know how they didn't know Jesus wasn't with them. But then they had to travel back how far? Two or three days journey, come back to find out where Jesus was. And when he found them, I guess his mom and dad were kind of upset about it. And Mary said to him, did you not know that we had to travel all the way back this far just to fetch you? And what did Jesus know? Jesus wasn't being a smart man because he loved his mother and he loved his dad, right? He said to her, What? I am. 
doing what? My father's business. He didn't tell his mother to mind her business like the kids do today. Because he honored his father and his mother. He loved them very much. Even though Joseph wasn't his biological father. He still loved them because, you know, it was Joseph's job to do what? To bring him up in the Lord. Because Joseph was of the lineage of what? David. According to the Bible, that's how it had happened. He was in that generation. He had to become from the house of David. And that's what Joseph belonged to. Joseph did not have to take Mary. But he knew who this person was. He knew his wife. He trusted her. And he was a devout man of God. And he took her. Because it was God's way. He knew it was right from the beginning. He didn't have any question to say, Wow, should I do it or... I, you know, I, I don't know. He didn't do that. But he did it. And it paid off, didn't it? God's word has to come forward. It always has to move forward. It has to come true. All the things that are happening today, everything is coming true. Everything that was written in the book of Daniel, some of the things in the book of Revelation, definitely some of the things that are written in Matthew chapter 24. Go ahead and get a good read there. These are the things that are happening now. What's going on over here to St. Matthew, chapter 19, and we're going to go on down to verse 13, and we'll start there. I'm not saying that the other stuff wasn't, is not uh, relevant. It is, really, the whole Bible is relevant. But I'm going to speak about the word discipline. Sister Graham, when she was here, she, always, she didn't say it, discipline, she called it discipline. She made sure that you knew that what the, what the proper English was, discipline. It's like saying whipped cream. Or my wife will say, I say to her, can you go to the store and get me some liquish? She goes, not liquish, it's liquorish. Liquish, liquorish, liquish. Whatever. Cool whip. Cool. Who cares? <laughs> Just like that's how that's how the second, first and second world war fire left something or cool with, I don't know. But anyways. Here we are. Dis discipline. Discipline for who? For the children of God, for you Christians. Discipline is what you're gonna need in these last times. It's what you're going to need when you give your heart to the Lord. You have to mean business with God. And there can't be nothing in the way. Is that proper English? Excuse me, I failed grammar in grade three. There can't be anything that you can put in front of God. Because God is first. So are you women. You're, well, you're not first. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Mm. You don't come first. God always comes first. Your husbands, you don't come first. You take the back seat, the Almighty God. God always is first. That's how you have to lay your foundation from the beginning. When God laid down his foundation, he told you exactly what he was going to do. And those things are coming to pass. Well, let's take a look at this here discipline wise. It says, Then there were brought unto him little children. Who's him? Jesus. That he should put his hands on them and pray. Jesus loved children. His, I think it just tickled him pink to go. Just put his 
hands and bless these children. Such is the kingdom of heaven. Right? Are we not supposed to be like child like children? Are you not called a child of God? Or are you a child of Satan? Which one are you? When you deal with God, it's yes or no, it's not maybe. There ain't no gray areas, it's black or it's white. It's sin or it's not. There ain't small sins and there ain't big sins. Sin is sin. An abomination is an abomination. Just like homosexuality, and I'm going to put it out there, fact checkers. It is against Almighty God's holy standard. It is an abomination to Him. Look it up. Go on in Romans chapter 1. Right in there you go. Go on and take a good look. I didn't write it, but I have to stand up for it. And preachers, if you're not telling the truth, you're going to be held to a higher standard, and you're the one who's going to pay the price in the end. You need to tell it. Then were they brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them, and departed thence. Jesus was a busy man, but he took time for everyone, especially for the children. He loved them so much. And behold, it says, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? That's a pretty straightforward question to ask Jesus, right? It's legitimate. It's a good question because he was concerned. He's, he's probably sat back and he's probably listened to Jesus. You know how, 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 how some people can sit there and you can just listen to him for hours. Because you're just fascinated with him. The problem with today is people are getting fascinated with a lot of stupid things. They take all these rappers. Not, I'm not talking about Christmas rappers. These guys are doing music there, rap music. And they're talking about killing the police and F this and F that. And, and I got all sorts of women and all sorts of. Doing all sorts of things that they put on there, that they sing about. That's your role model? That's what you want to be like? Just say. I don't think it's acceptable for children to listen to that kind of crap. Why should you have to put up with it too, parents? Every time the gay pride goes on downtown there, and these guys are out there shaking their package and all these little children and giving them balloons. You find you don't find that offensive? Yes, of course we do, Christian, but we're the ones who are told that we're intolerant. There was a guy yesterday, I see a guy was doing the interview, he said Kessler's still having pride parades down in the southern states during this summer. And and there were guys, these guys were going along, and this guy was dressed up like a a, a woman. It was, everybody knew it was a guy. And he was talking about Oh, we have to be tolerant. We have to love everybody. We have to do this and we have to do that. We have to show that we love everyone. And he says, well, what about Donald Trump? Well, he'd go to hell and die. Oh. Well, isn't that interesting, Mr. Intolerance? Speak about loving everybody. And then in the second word, he bring up Donald Trump's name. And all of a sudden, oh, he can go die somewhere. Go to hell. That's very nice. This is the kind of mental cases you're dealing with. Hey? 
if you don't believe anything that they're believing, they'll, they'll cast you out. They'll do all sorts of things. I was telling you about the time I went down fishing downtown here. I used to wear a t-shirt that said, y'all need Jesus. I used to wear that nicely. While I was down there at 5 o'clock in the morning with my friend fishing, there was no money around. But I didn't realize it was a gay pride that day. So when we started coming back to our truck to come home, I got surrounded by gay people because they read my shirt. And he became very intolerant, started spitting on me, punching on me, saying that I was this and I was that. All I was doing was trying to get to my car and go home with my bucket of fish. And I had to literally defend myself. I probably punched two or three of them out. I don't know if I did or not, but I don't know if they were boys or girls or what they were, but they all got a punch in the face as far as I was concerned. And the cop had to come out, and the nurse to come out to me and say, you're very intolerant, aren't you? I'm walking with a fish and riding a bucket of perch. Trying to go to my car, and I got a shirt on. It says, y'all need Jesus? I said, I was down here a long time before they even showed up. Jesus offended them. Because I wore a shirt? Yep. They spit on me? They punched me in the back of my head? Kicked at me? Called me all sorts of names? All that intolerance and love? All our signs said, love, love, love. And I don't want to have to defend myself. It's like I was going to stand back and take it. I started swinging. Last time I checked, I'm entitled to do that according to the laws of this land. Defend myself. No, I'm not. It didn't scare me. I was surrounded by at least 50 people. And everybody had their phones up. Videotaping everything you did. And the cop told me I was intolerant and I was a problem. The cop was a mental case. I said, Why don't you do your job, officer? Why don't you do your job and get me out of here? Or else there's going to be a lot more hurt people coming up along here. Yes. Yeah. Christians, you need to stand up for yourself. You need to stand up for God's word. So this guy came up. Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Good question. And he said unto him, Jesus said, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou will wait, will uh, will enter into life, keep the commandments. Did Jesus not tell us that? If you love me, you'll keep, keep keep God's commandments. Is that what he said? He saith unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt not do murder. Right? Did you read that one? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and mother. And that thou should love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, what do you know? Jesus spoke of Ten Commandments. I guess they were relevant, weren't they? And it said, The young man saith unto him, All of these have I kept from my youth? What lack I yet? What, what do I lack? What? I must be lacking something. Jesus said unto him, If thou would be, if thou wilt be perfect spiritually, okay, go and sell that thou hast. Give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and what? Follow me. But when the young man heard these things, he went away sorrowful because he, because he had great possessions. 
And Jesus said unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Does anybody know what the eye of a needle is? You look, you look inside the gates of the city. They're very small gates. And there's some things you just can't get through. Unless you've got a lot of stuff with you. So when you, when you say to them, it, it is what? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle. It is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. A camel can't get through that hole. They made it for people. Not for camels. Anybody see the size of a camel? You're pretty big. A lot of times they leave the camels outside the city, park them at the front because they couldn't go through this small archway. That's what they call an eye of a needle. Take a look at it, you'll see what that means. Not the eye of a needle like your, your, needle, your needle thread. Something different. It's easier for the camel to go through, which is physically impossible, and then a rich man go into heaven. Why? Anybody tell me why that's impossible? Because his heart's in the wrong place. The love of money is the root of all evil. That's what the Bible says. It doesn't say money is the root of all evil. I've had plenty of people tell me that money is the root of all evil. No, it's not. The love of it is. If you love money more than God, you have a problem. If you love all your earthly possessions more than God, you have a problem with Almighty God. God wants to be number one in your life, and it takes a great deal of discipline to be able to walk the walk and talk the talk with Almighty God. Nobody said it was easy, but there's things you have to do. You have to learn how to pray. You have to be a praying people. You have to learn to be able to talk to people. And mean it through love and in love. You can't always take your Bible and bash somebody over the head with it. But when Jesus spoke to people, he spoke to them with love and compassion. Jesus was not a weak hippie as what people think he is. He's not a hippie. He's not weak and feeble, some little frail person. Jesus was strong and mighty. Well, how do you know? You never met him. He was a carpenter. You have to be. You have to be strong. You have to be smart. You have to be in physical good condition to be a carpenter. Tell me if I'm lying. Hello, nobody out there. He worked with his dad. His dad was a what? Carpenter. <coughs> he wasn't some frail hippie. The Bible says that Jesus had the Holy Ghost without measure. Imagine having that power in your life. The Holy Ghost without measure. The same kind of power that spoke the world into existence. Is that what God did? Did Jesus not hush the sea to sleep? What did he do? He rebuked the winds and they ceased immediately. And hushed the sea to sleep like there was a great calm. That's what the Bible says. When was the last time you done that? Even if you had, even Jesus said, even if you had the faith of a grain of mustard seed, you should be able to speak to the Mount, Mount Mountain and say, "Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and it will happen." Discipline. 
You have to discipline yourself if you're going to walk with Almighty God. You have to love one another unconditionally. You have to pray for one another without ceasing. You have to be willing to do things for your brothers and sisters. The Bible says if it's within your means to do something and you don't do it, it is sin. If it's within your means and God's putting it on your heart to bless that person, I'm not being, I'm not trying to give all your money away, or to do this or do that. But when God's truly calling you, he says, you see, my, my sheep know my voice. And another, they will not follow. You have to be able to know God's voice when He's speaking to you. Because the devil comes also as an angel of light, he comes as a wolf in sheep's clothing. But the rich young ruler had many possessions, he was filthy rich. It was beautiful that he kept the Ten Commandments from his youth. Jesus never come against them and said nothing about that. But he said, if you want to be perfect, righteous, and holy, he said to him, Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have a great treasure in heaven. Pick up thy cross and follow me, right? Basically is what he's told him. Follow me. That, 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 right there, if that kid would have done what he had told him, I tell you, that would have been a, those things in sliced bread would you, you figure, this, this kid would have went places, you know what I mean? He could have been the next Paul. We don't know what happened to the kid after. I don't know. We don't know. We'll never know. Until you get there and ask. Maybe he's up there. Maybe he gave his heart to the Lord. Mary, the mother of Jesus, she also had to give her heart to the Lord. Did you know? She has to come the same way as everybody else in this world. I just seen a preacher the other day talking about, I think I said to you, Shirley, because the guy was saying, and the girl, and the girl asked, oh, who was it now? Was that, uh, that freak, Oprah Winfrey? She asked him, said to him, is there more, more, more than one way to get into heaven? And this preacher went, yeah, there is. And Jesus is not just the only way to get there. This is the guy that they're listening to on uh, on TV. It's not even Joel Osteen. This guy belongs to uh no, it doesn't matter. Sorry? Is it Hillsong? Well Hillsong is one of the guys. But the other guy they're coming against is uh Ryan hmm? Houston? He's from the what church was that? Hillsong. Hillsong, but there's another guy. Uh, I forget who it was. Elevation Church is another guy who speaks, saying there's more than one way to get to heaven. There's only one way, the Bible says, and that's through Jesus. This rich, this rich young ruler must have been broken hearted to hear. It says, when a rich, when a young man heard this thing, he went away, he's sorrowful, crying in his heart because he had great possessions. He didn't want to give them up. Jesus didn't do it to make an example of him. He was telling him exactly what to do. And when God speaks to your heart, he tells you exactly what to do. But if you haven't got the discipline in your life to know exactly who's talking to you, and you get that by disciplining yourself to study God's word, to show yourself approved unto Almighty God, you do it by learning how to pray. You do it by loving one another without ceasing, praying for one another without ceasing and loving each other unconditionally. Excuse me. It takes a great deal of discipline to be a Christian. Do you understand? And when you do anything less than what God calls you to do, you are lacking. This young man lacked. That one thing. And when Jesus told him, it broke his heart. 
He couldn't do it. He couldn't put God number one. That's why you see the empty chairs. That's why people can't commit to at least two hours a week just to come to even church. I'm too busy. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. What is two hours out of your life? Really? That God doesn't understand that you have a job maybe you can't get away from? God understands that. Please, make time for Him. When God asks and says, where are they, who can rob God? What does God say? You robbed me out of my tithes and offerings. You think it comes to the, you think it comes to the pastor of this church? I've never collected money from this church. You want to know why that is? Because this was given to me freely. I never accepted it. I don't want it. I honestly think that you should, you should have a full-time job and still be a pastor, as far as I'm concerned. Brother Graham, when he was here, he worked 40 years at the co-op. Arnold was a truck driver, trying to run one of these slaughterhouse trucks to pick up all that rotten meat. But he was still a pastor of the church. Sister Graham had a store over here, just on, on the other side of the, the street over on one side here. He used to have a grocery store, they worked on that, but Sundays, Guess what that was for? Anybody remember the days where nobody did nothing on a Sunday? And where did you go? You went to church. You gotta discipline yourself. You will not get anywhere without discipline. What do you mean? You want to fix cars? You want to be a mechanic? You have to have a license to do it in this province of Ontario, even Canada. There's a lot of, a lot of meat has to fix the car out of the Canadian Tire driveway. Go to the parking lot, everybody's got their hood up fixing something. That doesn't make them a mechanic. A licensed mechanic can sign safety in the province of Ontario and any, anywhere in Canada. But you have to go through five years of discipline, not only in school, but 11,000 hours of training in order to just write that ticket. And that doesn't mean that you're a smart mechanic. There's a lot of doctors that got doctor for their name and they're dumb as a stump. No, I'm not, I'm not telling you the truth. Discipline and practice and experience. That's what you gain from it. Experience. Experiences that you go through. You can share them with other people and tell them. But if they're not willing to listen to it, there's not much you can do about it. How many people have ever tried to talk to their children about things you went through? Like talking to that book there. <laughs> Hello, nobody home. And then years later, when they actually see that you are right, <clears throat> listen to the older generation, the old folks who've been there and done it, who know what's like to discipline themselves in everything that you do. You got to do it a hundred percent. When you're working with Almighty God, you have to do things a hundred percent. You can't go into it. Half cocked, you have to go through the whole thing. If Shirley went into somebody's house and she's up there and she's working on the, the older folks, taking care of the old folks, taking care of the people that, that can't help themselves, she doesn't go in and do half the job. She goes in and makes sure everything is taken care of because that's what she does. They're not, you're not going to be around long if you're doing things half cocked. You want to do the best for them. You want to provide the best care for them. 
That's what it's all about. And it takes love. It takes compassion. It takes a strict discipline to be able to do it. Because not all of those people are right in their mind. Let me tell you what. My brother Bill's a nurse. He says sometimes he, when he works with the geriatrics, right, so he takes care of the old folks. Let me tell you, it's not easy for him. Because sometimes he has to put socks on their hands. Because they'll scratch and punch him. It's not because they hate them. It's just sometimes they're not quite right with they got like a, what do you call that dementia or things like that or they got psychological problems. You know, you actually put after physically you put socks on their hands. So you, some of them got really long nails. You know, they'll punch at you, they'll kick at you, and do all sorts of things. You have to have a a love for that stuff. And if you don't love it, then you shouldn't be doing it. Whatever that you do, put your 100% into it. When it comes to the oracles of God, put your 100% into it. 99 and a half won't do. But let me tell you, we're not perfect. We're not perfect. We'll never be perfect until we get home. Not this one. The one up there. That's what's going to matter at the end of the day. When you stand before Almighty God and you hear that beautiful voice tell you, come on in, thou good and faithful servant. But if you're not going to put God number one, you're going to hear, depart from me, I never knew you. And that goes for you, pastors. Depart from me, I never knew you. Because you never spoke the truth to the congregation. You never spoke the truth. You're more worried about how much money you got in your dish. Or how much money that you get paid. You should be worried about your flock. You should be worried about their salvation. You should be worried about every aspect of their life. That's love. Brother Graham, if you miss church, sure as anything, he'd be calling you five minutes later. Ask him, where have you been? Where have you been going? Where have you gone? Why weren't you at church? That's exactly what he would do. And what are you going to do? Uh, 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 uh. What kind of lie are you going to make up? Seriously, do you understand what goal? He was concerned enough for you. You have to come back to your first love and put God first. But you've got to discipline yourself to do it. Amen.